Hello, Gareth Naylor here, watercolour artist extraordinaire and today I'm doing uh, a painting of a beach scene and this is going to be um, painting of Spain number two. So let's get on with it and um, what we're going to do is, yeah I really like this painting because um, we're going to have these uh, lads playing uh, soccer or football and what I love about this picture is the way, because it's on the beach, you get all this sand going up into the, um, into the air. And I just love that hazy effect. So we'll see how well that works out. So first of all, I'm using a big bamboo brush and um, I'm just wetting the sky area. Then um, I'm going to make the sky as simple as possible. So I'm going to do a bit of grey, well grey, light purple. So alizarin crimson, some uh, cobalt blue, a bit more. Okay. And then here we go. Now you have to think about when this um, dries off, it's going to fade. So maybe this is too, too delicate, too light. Yep, I, I can be a bit too delicate. I have that problem. So um, get rid of the delicacy. Okay, so like that, and then um, let's get some uh, cobalt blue. Okay. And we're going to do that here. So that looks really strong, which is good. And have a nice cloud shape. This is the cloud here. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there we go. And then here. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. You see that delicate lilac? And then here we've got our blue and we've got white as well. This beautiful white. Mm. Okay, that will do. And then let's go down here to the sand. This has to be done very delicately. I'm beginning with yellow. Maybe yellow is not such a good idea because it goes green very quickly when mixed with um, blue. So very soon let's go into the yellow ochre and make it mostly yellow ochre. This might be a bit too strong but I'm remembering that it will fade off. It will fade off. And then let's go for burnt sienna. I wonder who, I wonder who thought of these names, don't you? Burnt sienna. I like it though, burnt. It's a good name, isn't it? So there we go with the burnt sienna. And then finally at the very bottom, Let's go with some burnt umber. Umber. I like that. I just like that word. Okay. And I'm quite happy with that for the first wash. One of the problems I have is um, I hate doing these videos because um, I just tighten up. I think, you know, when you're 
performing so to speak and people are watching you it's very difficult just to paint as casually as you normally do um it's just strange isn't it but the more almost indifferent and couldn't give a toss you are probably the better you're going to paint that's that's not exactly true but but do you know what i'm saying have you ever seen those artists who are carefully carefully painting the picture and the whole thing just looks rubbish it's got no spontaneity no life and you don't want to say that to them because you know they're really trying so i'm not sure where you get that balance somehow you've got to of course you want to do a good painting and especially drawing you can be very careful with the drawing i think but once you start putting on this paint you've got to loosen up and that's it's very difficult to get that right level of casualness or indifference you know whatever it is so what i'm going to do now is just um yeah sorry for the lecture i'm just going to spray this try and create some texture and then let's leave that to dry okay now it has dried and we're going to do the um, the background I'll just switch off my air conditioner because maybe it's a um, bit too noisy which means it's going to get super hot here okay so um, let's see I think I'll use this brush my big bamboo brush and um, we want basically two mixes we want a dark green mix this blue and then maybe some of this burnt sienna sometimes when I get too enthusiastic mixing up these colors I get splatter on the paper yeah okay so I need to mix up quite a lot there we go and then okay here I want um, some blue and some red and a touch of this burnt umber there's my dark color so I'll be using that too and I might do some variations within that so let's begin mm -hmm. so okay uh, here we go so we're going to have a building there and then a building here so one of the stressful things or fun things normally fun when i'm not being fil filmed this is fun um but slightly stressful thing is um, you have to do this quickly but you can do some spray spray spraying there we go and I've got these um, trees going up actually I think I'll just wet this really wet this a lot now I think I've made this too too black so what I'll do is I'll get some pure blue now and I'm just going to do pure blue and add some color 
And then let's do some um, pure burnt sienna here. And then this colour, this, um, what is it, turquoise blue or something. I'm going to use that one here. I think that will hopefully show up a lot. Oh, I'm not sure where it is. Maybe it's here. Oh yeah, there it is. Love that colour. Okay. And then roughly just paint around these figures. Don't get too worried about details. Well, careful painting yet. And then again, spray it. Okay, then let's get my smaller bamboo brush. And um, let's just do around these figures. So this is the irony. The scary bits become the fun bits. Okay. There we go, and it really is drying out tremendously quickly. So I splay the brush hairs like this, and then <laughs> nothing happened. Let's try again here. Ah, oh, it almost, there we go. Yes, it happened. So as you can see, it's not super easy to get this edge, but something like that. And then let's do here too takes practice like that and then we're going to have these um, palm trees and uh, the, there were there was a lot of them but I'm not going to do so many here it's just trying to get the balance right so I'm not copying how it really was and this, this part needs to be done with a real looseness. Can you see that? Hopefully I don't screw it up. But it needs that looseness. Can you see how that really looks nice? Because we've taken this wash and now we're adding these lovely kind of almost like decorations to the wash. Lovely edges there we go and maybe there's just one more little thing I could add so I needed a bit more white of the sky luckily I've got a bit there but the real white parts have almost disappeared so I should have had less blue sky coming down Okay, and I might do another one of them here. So I'm just sort of making this up because it wasn't really quite like this. And that's what you've got to do with your paintings. You've got to, you've got to care more about the visual image than the actual scene. Unless, of course, it becomes a real moral issue for you that you've, you have to paint what you see and that's a real big deal for you. OK, I'm going to do something different now. I want to do a soft edge here. So by turning it around and it's tilted, it's going to start running down and that's going to help me. Can't explain why but that's going to help me make a softer edge maybe because I can start with pure water 
here and then it's going to run down this way rather than run the other way and so that's going to make this bit soft and hopefully white And that's what we need because we're going to do this dusty or sandy, hazy effect. Okay. And can you see all the lovely colours in there now? It has dried off a bit here and I might just, I might just do this. It's very dangerous to do this because you can get cauliflowers but but I'm gonna do that as you get more experience you get more confident at doing that and getting away with it getting away with it okay Wow, it's really getting hot in here, like a sauna. I think the uh, temperature here is uh, something like 47 degrees. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit or whatever. Not 47, so <laughs> I think 37. But it, it's really hot. It's so super hot. And now I'm using tissue, so, well, kitchen roll. And this is pretty, when you start using tissue or kitchen roll, then uh, you have to be really careful because it, it takes up a lot of paint and sometimes it, it, it doesn't work. but I really want to soften this edge, so that's why I'm doing it. And also sometimes, like you can see here, it's giving a very hard edge, which I don't really want. So we're going to have to try and soften that. And I, I think maybe, maybe that's happening. So the important thing here, and uh, the difficult thing is, Although we want the edge very, very soft here and light, here we want it dark. So that's difficult to get that, that contrast of dark and light and soft and hard. Okay, and if little parts aren't, if you get in parts where how can I put it? it? The paint isn't drying evenly and you're starting to get these edges. You can just use your finger and just blend them together a little bit to get rid of these little edges, drying edges. But once again, it, it does take a bit of experience. But the, the sooner you start, then the sooner you get good at that. Hmm, quite like that. One more spray. And then maybe that's a bit hard. Okay. So let's let's leave that to dry. Okay, so that has dried. Pretty happy with that. Now we're going to do these figures. So this, it was a lot of fun to paint these figures. Um, I just wish I could remember how I did it. So I suppose the first thing that I can remember is doing the, um, the heads. And uh, I keep it really simple. And I use this dark mix of um, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, and burnt umbar. 
There we go. So I use that. And here too. Okay, so just simple blobs, yeah, for their heads. And then the next thing I'm going to do is, um, yeah, I think I might risk. No, 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 no. I was going to do the skin, but not yet. So I'm going to do their um, their trunks. So I, I'm going to use this blue. I need to squeeze out a bit more of this. Oh, it's Cobalt Turquoise Light. Hmm. So, maybe if they could just call it Turquoise, that would be enough. But there you go. And I'm looking at my picture. Uh, my previous picture. And using that as a reference and uh, okay here we go do his trunks or shorts or whatever and then here mm, yeah okay maybe give him some green ones mint green You want to paint these quite with a quite thick mix. Yep. Okay. And then all oh, right, we've got someone with some red ones. Maybe I'm going to change this. I'm going to have this one here with the red ones. This guy's the focal point. So red is going to draw the eye. And so I'll give him the red ones. There we go. And um, cobalt blue. Get some of that and use some on this guy here. Okay, and then we've got this figure here. Could be white on him. Hmm, so maybe his will be white. But then again, against this white background, maybe not so great. So let's give him some that are burnt sienna. What will that look like? Burnt sienna, though. I'm not sure anybody will have. Okay, we'll go for yellow ochre.
I don't think someone's going to have brownie trunks. Okay. There we go. So now I need to allow this to dry and then after that I'm going to do the skin colours. Hmm. Just looking at this white thing here. I don't like that. That's not quite right. So we can just correct that by getting some blue and just blending this in Okay, there we go, and let's leave that to dry. Oh, maybe here, a little bit, and here a little bit. And then get some tissue and just dab that. It's a, it's a little bit better. Okay, let's leave this to dry. Okay, this has now dried and it's onto the skin tones. So let's get some. Uh, yellow ochre, some brilliant orange maybe, and let's try that, okay here we go. Okay. And a hand here. The hands are the most difficult thing. So, and now a bit more of that mix. And I'm not sure that. It doesn't look very much like a skin tone, does it, at the moment? So I think I'm going to add a touch of white. Let's see how this goes. So titanium white. And first of all, let's try it here. So in a way, this is no longer pure watercolour. So yeah, some people get really upset about this and uh, I don't. Hmm, maybe that's better. But I haven't really captured his body correctly. It looks like he's wearing a top still, but there we go. Okay, then let's do this guy. So really with his body, it just needs to be like almost a rectangular shape. It just comes straight down. Okay, and then one line for this arm. And it gets slightly narrower. It tapers. And this one too. And then the difficult hands. Oh, that looks pretty good. Not 
too bad. Okay, and the legs. Really, I want a dry brush effect. Yeah, didn't wipe off, but it will do later when I add water. I'm going to soften all of this. Okay, well, yeah, that's not too bad. It looks a little bit plump. That's fine. A healthy plump. Okay, so let's do... Um, I've become a bit of a healthy plump myself, actually, over the summer holiday. Okay, and then this guy, try and get that hand right. Yeah, did it. Okay. That's quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, happy with that. And then he's got one leg striding forward. Eh, dry brush would have been nicer. And then another leg here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's quite nice. Amazing how just using your finger can really massively improve the painting. And again, this is not quite correct. This kind of shape, it looks like he's wearing something. So, hmm. But hopefully later we can we can improve this a bit and then a bit of dry brush for his legs. It's really important with figures to get a touch of dry brush if you can. I failed here. But later we can do we can do a bit more with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then here. One leg striding forward. And, oh yeah. Knee there. Oh yeah, I like the angle. And his angle is good too. Yeah, this is not too bad. That looks quite dynamic. We can feel that. Sadly, he looks like an angel floating down. So, but maybe his legs will mostly disappear and he looks good. So I hope as you look at these figures, you, you get an idea of like what makes a good looking figure. Okay, and... And a good looking figure, I'm not at all talking there about, you know, like pretty looking shapes. Because to be honest, me personally, I find sometimes, you know, very fat looking men are amazing shapes to paint. I, I, you know, difficult, but look great. And the same with like old men with walking sticks and stuff like that. Um, look great just look fantastic so whereas sometimes um, just normal figure can look a bit boring sometimes but what I mean when I say these are good shapes I mean like the posture you can feel a sense of motion dyn dyn dynamism is that right, Dinah, Dinah? I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> what happened to me? Dynamic, Dyn dynamism. 
maybe that's okay. Okay, so they're dynamic. Um, now, what I want to do is maybe darken them. So this is a fun bit. So I'm going to make a slightly purplish mix and I'm going to use this cobalt turquoise light. A touch of alizarin crimson. It's going to give me a very lilac-y colour. So let's use this. Let's see what happens. Might not work. So let's think, where's the light? Maybe the light's coming across this way. So that's super. No, no, it's coming from behind. Okay, so it's coming from over there. So, wow, that's a bit too powerful. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Not not as good as my original one, but but it looks kind of skin skin color still, and it looks like he's in shadow, so. Maybe that's a pass. Okay, and then I need a bit more of this mix. Mm -hmm. And alizarin crimson. And... Uh, Okay, here we go, bit redder, okay, and redder, come on, redder, okay, there we go, something like that. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe better than this one. Okay, and then this guy. So I needed to make it very, very red. This purplish mix. Oh, and he's looking great. Yeah, like it. Okay, let's do this angel light figure in the background. Okay, not looking very dynamic, that figure. Okay. And then these legs here. Okay, and that's basically it. Let's leave that to dry and then we're going to do the sand here. 
that will be a lot of fun. Now we're going to do the sand that's like being kicked up into the air. So um, I'm going to use my big bamboo brush and I'm going to use some yellow ochre and just going to blend it in with this background like this Okay, then a bit more. And try and soften these legs a little. And I, I added the ball, just the top part. And I think I need some white. So wet my small bamboo brush, get some pure white and just put it on like that. Oh, why put that? So I'm going to have him, this one over here, faded a lot. It's maybe too much. Maybe it looks like he's in a sauna. <laughs> oh yeah, so that looks quite good. But as it dries out, it will become more transparent. Oh, and you can already see that. Okay. So add a bit more white, a bit more white there. And I just love that effect. I'm not, I'm still not sure if it's going to work, but But I can see potential in it and I know if it doesn't work in this painting when I do a future one it will eventually work and look really really good. It's just exciting except I lost the ball. <laughs> lost the ball. Got too excited. Okay. Great stuff. I think that's working. And then let's do some burnt sienna. I need to add some more. And then it needs to be kind of rough. So this is where, again, there has to be a certain kind of roughness, a casualness in your painting for it to work. And you just get that through doing it a lot. Okay, and then make it really dark here and sort of nice brushwork. Well, <laughs> nice brushwork, kind of very quick and casual. And I like it. I really like it. It's got lovely feeling, lovely warmth, lovely colours, mystery, exciting. Okay. Hmm. So maybe that will do. 
and um, let that dry and then just final thing I might do a little bit of dark dark brown here just some little marks Okay, and then spray that. Fantastic. And his face. <laughs> his face. We have to paint his face. So, yellow ochre. A bit of yellow ochre. A bit of brilliant orange. And a touch of white. Titanium white. And here we go. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe looks a bit looks a bit too pink. Yeah, yeah, maybe that will do. Maybe his face too. Try and blend this in a bit. It will fade a bit and become a bit darker and I think this guy just want to do that again with him do that again this skin colour Looks a bit better. Yeah. Maybe too light, but I like the way it looks now. Okay. Good. Let's leave that to dry and then let's do our highlights. Okay, that has now dried and um, I'm going to use now my liner brush and uh, some uh, white paint. I do use a lot of white paint, don't I? And I'm just going to do highlights now on these figures. But I'm pretty happy with this. I wish I hadn't drawn such a strong pencil line because you can still sort of see it, but I'm still happy with it. It is a watercolour sketch and I prefer doing a sketch to doing a painting and with sketches you can often see the pencil lines and I'm really quite okay with that. And here we go doing little highlights on these lads. And I love to paint these highlights. And that looks really good. Isn't that dynamic? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, nothing worse than doing a figure and it just looks stuck on and not moving. That will do. Oh, actually, that's quite good. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Goodness me, I like it. This guy looks like he's looking at himself. <laughs> well, I got most of the figures right. Okay, and I think that's it. So I'm really quite happy with this one. So uh, I like what's happening here. I like this softness and I love these dynamic figures in this dusty, hazy whatever, on this hazy, sandy beach, whatever. Looks great. Okay, so that's all. Um, have a go. And um, and basically, that's all I should say. But if it doesn't go right, then remember, I've been doing this 20 years and it takes a lot of practice. You've just got to um, paint and paint and paint and enjoy it. Enjoy it. And, uh, and the good paintings will come bit by bit. So, happy painting. <laughs>